I've had this truck since uh, 2014, and I've put about 600,000 miles on it. And then I bought my first rig in uh, September. I'll never forget the date. September the 3rd, 1983 was the day that I realized my dream and bought my first truck. Hi. Hi, Carl Smith. Joe Norberg, nice to meet you. Good to meet you, too. I started in business back in uh, 1983, and they had just deregulated the trucking industry to where now uh, small-time operators like me could and be in a small trucking business for themselves. Before 1980, it would have been virtually impossible for Carl to start his own trucking business. That's because of the Motor Carrier Act of 1935 which put the government in complete control of the trucking industry. The industry was regulated both in terms of where you could go and how much you could charge. Our rates were set through rate bureaus. We operated on the roads that were approved. There were bureaucratic limitations and inefficiencies, such as forcing truckers to make long, empty backhauls. But overall, the established trucking companies and unions were happy with the arrangement. They knew that there would be guaranteed profits and jobs, and it would be almost impossible for a new startup to compete. So it was a good deal for the companies, and it was something that uh, we were loath to change. The Motor Carrier Act of 1980 fully deregulated trucking the truck deregulation legislation. It'll get the heavy hand of the federal government out of the area of the uh, private uh, sector. It'll mean uh, new opportunities and new jobs. And it was devastating to the existing industry. But I think it's something that had to happen. After it was deregulated, it allowed for a smaller uh, less established uh, individual like me to get into the industry and earn a good living. Morning, Matt. Morning, Misty. What are you doing today, Matt? Hey, uh, we have a load picking up today at 3 p.m., delivering uh, Tuesday at 8 a.m. into Timminsville, South Carolina. That's the Honda ATV plant, right? Yes, sir. This is a compressed trailer or a liquid tanker? A uh, liquid tanker. Uh, as the years went on, I bought uh, another truck here, another truck there until at one point I was up to 11 trucks operating a small fleet out of Ohio. Deregulation led to a substantial shift in the industry. Many more small outfits, like Carl's, gained a competitive foothold. Over 40 of the larger regulated trucking companies went out of business, but some adapted and still operate today. Someone might ask, you know, why when you lose, you know, 40 or 50 companies that went out of business after deregulation, why is that a good thing? That's a good thing because the consumers are getting a better service and product as a result of that. And uh, when a company goes down, that freight is still moving. So some other company is going to be pick that up. Are those companies going to need employees to help handle that freight? Well, of course they are. So many of those people who, who indeed lost their jobs as a result of the company failure, they're working for our other organization. But the good thing is, is that industry is still highly regulated as it pertains to safety. What's not regulated is who can and cannot be in this industry. And I think that's a better uh, deal for everybody. Uh, we've sent all four of our children to college, and we've actually lived a, a pretty decent life. I'm one of those people that I knew what I wanted to be when I was 12 years old. I wanted to be a truck driver. Others told me that I had a lot more potential to do other things, but I said, that's really what I want to do. I'm one of the lucky ones. I got to do what I wanted to do. Initially, deregulation in the trucking industry was tumultuous. But in the end, the American consumer benefited from lower shipping costs and more efficient service. And new truckers like Carl could enter the industry and make their mark. Thank you so much for sharing your story and spending time with me today. Thank you, John. This has been great. Take care.